Welcome, everybody. Um, John Michael Brook. I'm a principal security architect. I handle basically a, a business information security officer for Starbucks. I handle MarTech retail and emerging technology as well as APAC. And so what we're going to talk about today is very applicable to each one of those market segments. And uh, I'm Randall Brooks. I'm a principal technical fellow with Raytheon Technologies. A lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about is through work through the Cloud Security Alliance. So we'll make a lot of references to them. I'm our principal uh, representative to the Cloud Security Alliance. And a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about is uh, work that has been done through the CSA, which we'd greatly you know, prop up and say something that you guys should Check them out if you haven't looked at them, especially if you're interested in cloud in general. Uh, they are pretty much the definitive place you want to be for cloud security. And then I chair uh, that same working group, uh, Top Threats, as well as a one of the research fellow with them. So long history, really good work coming out of them. And again, um, it works nicely when you see the rest of the uh, presentation here. Or, oh, that's the other question. Who was actually in the uh, lab on Tuesday? Anybody? See, that was a little bit later in the day, so those people were up not at 8.30. Yeah, so this is, this is actually the second presentation um, that we had this week. I actually wasn't supposed to do the first one, uh, but uh, I was able to attend it. Uh, and so some of the lessons learned even uh, became even more lessons learned because we just ran this like two days ago, uh, what we're going to talk about here today. So a little bit disclaimer, this is kind of the RSA one. Uh, ours is, it's basically our opinion. Uh, it doesn't even necessarily represent our company, nor does it represent the Cloud Security Alliance, which a lot of this work was done with. Uh, so just if you have any complaints, please send it our way. That is John Michael. And then uh, just a little bit more about myself. I also do um, our, I'm a chief engineer for our product cybersecurity group. Uh, so I work directly for the chief product cybersecurity officer for our company uh, out of corporate. And I went to Purdue, which I'll have to always bring up because uh, uh, Eugene Spafford, who is my uh, professor, and if anyone wonders why I wear a bow tie, is because of him. He's signing a book, I believe, today, and, uh, and so forth. Make him a best-selling author. So what? Nothing. Anyways, uh, please forgive us. This is a working title. Apparently, uh, nobody researched that Game of Threats was trademarked. So kind of uh, ha had, a, had a quick moment. You can see the Game of Thrones uh, reference there. Um, we're going to fix that. We've got a couple of ideas already. Yeah, uh, the, the Cloud Secure Alliance has been going through a varied number of potential titles for this document. Uh, we actually don't have it out, but this should be coming out and available on the Cloud Security Alliance's website in about a few weeks, actually. June. June? June. Okay, they say June. Uh, here's some of the uh, main authors of it. Um, uh, kind of started off with uh, kind of a brainchild uh, that John Michael and myself had. Uh, we brought it to the CSA and got a bunch of folks to help author the rest of the document and, and so forth. So, um, one of the things that we've been doing with the, the top threats is we've been surveying uh, a lot of companies out there and kind of say, what are the biggest risks that you would use? And by the word, the top threats is a trademark term by the Cloud Security Alliance. Uh, they are more issues that you have to deal with, uh, with respect to the, you know, the systems that you interact and, and those types of things. Um, so <clears throat> what we're trying to do is kind of take that knowledge of those threats and figure out how can we make this a little bit fun? How can we gamify it? And we're trying to help get folks involved, understand, and we had some uh, additional work on the area of threat modeling. And so we tried to look at 
cloud services and things that you might have, how do we apply the top threats to that and figure out how can we use uh, that information to help teach folks and help, you know, help folks learn about the threats and how they might affect their system. And so as such, we came up with this idea of creating a game based on the work that was done through the CSA. All right. Um, <clears throat> Of course, this one is eye chart, and I, uh, it's hard for me to see it from a distance. Uh, so uh, when we do um, threat modeling, uh, specifically for the cloud, we focus on uh, really what we want to protect, how, my, uh, how we are going to protect it, you know, how likely we need to protect it, and some of the consequences of failure. And so we applied that same concept with respect to uh, doing some of the uh, the threat modeling with respect to the cloud. So the first item that we do, and we do this in the game as you go through it, is we kind of identify our, our, our security uh, objectives. What do, we, what do we need to achieve? What you know, system are we building? And what uh, goals that we might have? And then we kind of create a scope of the assessment. So in our instance, we draw out a system really quick and then we look at that system and we start to decompose it and look at the piece parts that comprises that system. We kind of focus on really the ingress and egress points and how the system you know, might interact with other things. And then we look at those potential threats. So we reference back to, uh, it came out last year called the Pandemic 11 for top threats to cloud, uh, cloud security. And so we took that pandemic 11 and then applied that based on the system. And then look, and from that, as a group, as you play the game, you start to talk out and identify any weaknesses and gaps you might see in the system. So it kind of like has that tabletop exercise kind of feel where we're trying to get folks speaking and, and talking to each other and understanding what, uh, what issues that you might have and then uh, come up with ways of fixing that with controls and, uh, you know, and just getting everyone together and coming up with a plan on how to uh, improve a system like that. All right. <clears throat> so uh, in our, our system, we do try to um, make a little bit of randomness to it. Uh, since it is the pandemic 11 and unfortunately not a 12 uh, or even cited thing, uh, we came up with utilizing uh, dice, for example, where you roll a dice and uh, of course one in 11 kind of uh, will address to the, the first item there. You can see it a, li a little bit in the red cards and when the full document comes out, there'll be whole big detail on all of these little items here on what they are and how they might, uh, how might you might read this to play the game. So you do roll the dice, and let's say you roll, uh, you know, number one. Then you say, okay, uh, we've selected controls. We have people to operate our system. How might that um, that threat have affected our system? And then we add a little bit of extra randomness and say, hey, you know, even as good as you possibly did, that potentially this threat could still affect your system uh, um, based on, based on um, just an extra bit of randomness. We've, we've selected about 25% uh, of the roles. Um, even if the best you did, an unknown vulnerability comes out and you're still hit with that particular issue. All right, so in our case, um, if you did roll a two, um, that uh, that uh, equates to, in the Pandemic Lemon, uh, the insecure interfaces and APIs. And so as you roll that, you basically say, hey, do you know, did we have any kind of application security processes? You know, did we, uh, you know, did we put any kind of, you know, money and controls and effort into securing that portion of our, of our system? And then uh, to add that little extra part of, you know, does it affect us? Uh, we chose uh, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, you roll that and you say, oh no, the problem happened. And then you roll it again, you get a six. 
and then you lose a little bit of budget. Now we do let the folks, um, we have a person, he's the kind of the person in charge, he's the CISO or program manager. Uh, that person will start off with a $5 million budget, he'll, he'll buy his controls, he'll buy, uh, he'll hire his staff, and the controls are basic are based off of whether they're platform as a service, software as a service, infrastructure as a service, and so forth. And depending on which one you choose, they have a certain level of cost and what we call uh, an ease of use factor uh, with respect to that. All right, you wanna do the sure. advanced? All right, so one thing that uh, I would like to add, so that top threats, marketing term, uh, the risks that go along with it, those are something that comes out of a, uh, a survey that we run every two years uh, within the Top Threats Working Group. And then we do a deep dive, uh, quote unquote deep, uh, from the standpoint that it's ancillary, of minimal. We, uh, it, it's more than just, hey, this is what we came out of with the survey. It's actually looking at case studies. So Colonial Pipeline uh, would be one that's coming up pretty shortly. Uh, some of the Log4j, the breach incidents that occurred with that, those will be included in there as well. Now, here, here you see uh, um, the advanced version of the game. And this is what we ran on Tuesday. We've run this about uh, five times thus far. You guys are seeing the, uh, the first four. And with each iteration, we've tried to incorporate uh, more easily run and, well, at the same time, trying to make sure that uh, the randomness and the overall playability uh, works. So with the advanced version, you see up there, similarly, roll the die, come up with one of the uh, Pandemic 11. You could also, um, we chose the die just because of the randomness that goes along with it. However, um, you could also do it with like a deck of cards if any of you have played the, uh, the horses game where you, you, know, you have one through, uh, one through 12, you take money off depending on the uh, dice roll. Um, so here you see the, uh, you roll two, similar to the easy version of the game. But in this one, you have mitigations that you also add in there. So again, the, uh, the, the Cloud Security Alliance has a complete gamut as far as uh, a cloud controls matrix. So similar to like a, uh, a NIST 800P3 or an ISO 27001, a series of controls that give you a framework that you can work against. Well, it's got things like encryption. It has things like infrastructure and perimeter defenses. Um, so we incorporated those. You can see uh, network defense. You get your choice. As Randall mentioned, uh, infrastructure, SAS, PaaS, you can also roll it out as a hybrid on-premise. So with this particular incidence, you, uh, you, or inci mitigation set, you see the CICD uh, pipeline is a SaaS offering, um, and then uh, uh, SAST and DAST. So we initially said, okay, use some of the previous work that we'd done with uh, threat modeling. Let's create that system, put the mitigations in place, and then go ahead and uh, roll and see what gets exploited. At the bottom there, you see the roll of seven. So you create a, a, a team uh, within the little purple cards that you saw there uh, a second ago. They have costs and they have capabilities, right? So a CISO is going to have, uh, I think it was a 10, uh, as far as their overall capability, whereas a deputy CISO is going to have more time during the week to work on things like incidents. That's the idea. You got interns in there, they're going to have the uh, lowest applicability, the lowest capability, um, but they also have the lowest cost. Uh, at the bottom there, you see uh, those calculations. The project manager is actually the kicker. Um, we had a lot of people gaming the system, and we'll talk about that in a couple of seconds. Good so far? More or less, a little confusing. Yeah, that's what we found in the uh, present area in the labs. Yes. Yes. So those are unfortunately, I didn't catch that one. Um, within the document, it says uh, work capacity. Everything's capacity. 
So, and that was actually one of the things that we picked up during the, uh, during the run throughs. Mm -hmm. That particular piece became problematic from the standpoint that, yes, people are like, what's cap a capacity capability? So, all right, lessons learned. General lessons. The top there. This needs to be run uh, if you are going to create one of these, right? That's what we did. Um, let's just suggest that it has an applicability to large corporate organizations. I'll just say it that way. Um, build it versus buy it. If you go through and utilize the examples that are within the, uh, w within the game as it stands, those examples are uh, generic, right? They're not customized to the environment. Whereas when we go through on a larger organization, you can pull those directly from the systems that you're actually using, right? You want your developers to learn. Well, in doing that, you're going to have much more uh, project management style work. You've got time that's going to be uh, required to, for, for upkeep. And so uh, that's that first bullet, duration. We found this out. So the version as it stands right now that'll be released in that document, we tried it with a two hour time frame, right? Description, how to play the game, 40 minutes is what we use to do all of the uh, setup, et cetera, the background explanation, and then 80, 80, 80 minutes 80 for minutes. the uh, for the gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, the first one about a year ago, I won't say it was a disaster, but we did not have the example systems, and we just expected, as a technical audience, that you know RSA. We expected that there would be at least one architect or one engineer or one developer that could come up with a system, right? Hey, what does a LAMP stack look like in the cloud, right? What can you actually deploy as a platform, as a service with Kubernetes in Azure? Oh my goodness, it was a disaster. So we kind of gave them a system, uh, kind of drew one up on the uh, whiteboard and said, hey, if you don't follow what we're doing, try this one. So we created two of the systems uh, and eight examples as far as, hey, what about a human resources system, right? Learning management system, internet of things, what would that look like? HR, et cetera. So we gave two, uh, two single examples or two fully decomposed examples and then where those uh, cloud controls matrix pieces would come in and mitigate, right? You put in a perimeter, perimeter defense, you put in a firewall, what would that look like? What would that protect you against within the, uh, w within the game itself? Uh, you see the learning time? Uh, how long does it take? That 40 minutes versus an 80 minute gameplay, right? It seemed like it was okay. It'd probably be better to have a 20 minute learning time versus uh, whatever that would work out for, for a two hour. Three hours, 40 minutes of learning, probably about right. Uh, durability and longevity. How long do you want this to work for, right? The examples that we included might not be relevant in another, say, six, eight months, year, whatever it is. Uh, as far as the maintain uh, maintainability, Running this at a conference, again, we expected a technical audience, and in some of the conferences we had that, some of the ones we didn't. So when we run this at a, a, an executive level, right, it makes, it makes it a little more understandable as far as the business aspects go, but the actual technical gameplay and what mitigations you're going to put in, et cetera, didn't quite translate, right? So, they understood the business side of it. They understood why they're dealing with headcount, what it looks like on an annual basis as far as the dollars and cents go. But when you started getting into, hey, we need to put a, uh, uh, an audit capability in there and that's going to mitigate X, Y, and Z uh, of the pandemic 11, oops, right? Didn't quite follow. Uh, training objectives, 
Again, we run that top threats, the working group. We put those surveys out every two years. So theoretically, you should be updating it every two years, right? Is that something that you want to do? Is that something you want to take on? NIST, on the other hand, I mean, how long did it take between R4 and R5? At least three or four years, five years. Ish. So how many places will this be presented, right? Is this something that you're going to use for an entire year? Are you a consultant? Are you going to do this at multiple organizations, uh, one a week, one a month, one a quarter? If you're just doing it internally with your developers at that particular organization, probably a little more, uh, a little easier to run through with teams that already understand the system, the requirements that you have in place, et cetera. And then trainers. So we had four trainers, trainers. We had the two authors and two facilitators uh, at the one just this past Tuesday. week. Mm -hmm. And even one of them, uh, one of the guys that helped review and, and write the material, still had a little bit of difficulty as far as capability versus capacity, right? Having those particular words in there didn't quite add up. And then uh, cloud-specific challenges. Does your, uh, d does your training, you know, the people that are going to, your attendees, do they understand the difference between IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS, right? We kind of took some liberties in saying that SaaS was easier to uh, implement, but probably less effective, and we'll explain that a little bit more here in a second. You want to cover this one or you want me to? I've talked a lot. I'm boring. Uh, yeah. You can do this one. All right. You can do the last one. So randomness. Uh, some of the things that, that came out of that, uh, th those five courses, right? Randomness. Seems silly. But if you take a pair of dice, who's gone to Vegas? Who plays craps? Yeah. What happens when you throw a three and a four, a five and a two, a six and a one, right? You get paid on the pay line. That's crapping out, or not crapping out, but uh, you, you lose all your money if you had a point. So it's easier to roll a seven versus a, a two or a 12, and that randomness actually impacts the gameplay quite a bit. So we wanted an even distribution between one and 11. Probably should have used a deck of cards because you can actually pull out the kings or the aces, and you'll get that one through, one through 11. However, we didn't because we originally thought of it with the die, right? The 12-sided die. Uh, you can use a spinner. Those probably work pretty well, except you gotta create it in advance and then you're going to tear them up or somebody's gonna take them with them. Uh, Pseudo-random number generator, dude, really? I mean, you're gonna have each person download an app or something along those lines and one person's going to use one that doesn't have a good <laughs> randomness generator, et cetera. That framework, authoritative source. What does your environment, what do you as a company use for a framework, right? You want something that uh, is holistic from the standpoint, and, and if you've got requirements written against those, even better. You start looking at things like cryptography, you've got a set of, uh, a set of requirements that you can put in place based on NIST, based on ISO based on the standards that you have for your organization. Um, design examples, I mentioned that a little bit earlier. People are like, what the heck do I draw, right? What, what am I going to put together? What does it mean when I do everything with, uh, with in, in a cloud Azure Active Directory versus AD on site, right? Some directory service that you have running inside of your corporation today. Uh, the game examples, going back to uh, Randall's easy versus uh, the advanced version. The easy version was just roll the dice. It hits, it hits, you take some money, you, you say, hey, why did it happen? Why did it work? Why did it not work? The advanced one, it became more fun. The, the, uh, some of the feedback that we got was like the anticipation of whether or not that die roll was going to hit was fabulous. I was like, cool. But it was also a little more confusing to set up, right? Um, 
that mitigation and scoring. Uh, this is one of the things that will come out within the, uh, the document uh, itself is a scorecard on how you can put together this game, right? That was one of the big findings. People were like flipping back between pages. The first one we suggested, hey, why don't you take a picture of this one? Don't do that. Don't do that. That, was, that. that made it impossible. People are flipping back and forth on their phone. It's just not enough screen real estate. So we ended up figuring out how to put everything onto one, uh, one page. Even that was a little bit uh, difficult. We, we ran it with the, uh, with the sample document, and there was some feedback that came out of that, like, hey, why don't you put together a Yahtzee-style scorecard? Right, so we'll take those. Uh, maybe there'll be an even more lessons learned. I don't know, but we're trying to incorporate as many of those into our document uh, as we can. And then uh, presentability, right? Printouts, extraordinarily important. Oh, and don't print them on glossy paper. People, I mean, these are things that you won't really think about. You want it at that high res but then people can't write on the, on the page unless they have like a Sharpie marker. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something we do in the future, have like Sharpies. Yeah, we did have the Sharpie, but we had it like on A-frames. So yeah, it was one of, definitely we had people commenting on that particular item. Okay, application. Mr. Brooks. Okay. So there are multiple variants of this particular game. Uh, the initial concept was to make it a dice game. We also had the idea of making it a card game. Uh, and there is in the Cloud Security Alliance's threat modeling document this idea of, of playing cards. And in the playing cards, you'll have an asset. You'll have um, a threat. You'll have a, uh, you know, a, re, um, a result or, or an impact on, on, on your system. And so one of the things that we tried to do is say, okay, let's look at something like Colonial Pipeline. It wasn't necessarily a cloud issue per se, but how would that apply given the idea if you took any threat out there and looked at it with respect to um, specific um, uh, results and, and so forth. I actually can't see from that side. My eyes are not that good. Um, yeah, okay. All right, so we went through each one um, and, uh, and for the Colonial Pipeline, we basically said, you know, there was a system out there that had a, a single, uh, you know, username and password for a, for a, um, for a VPN access. Well, the attacker was able to leverage that and get network connectivity and then propagate uh, crypto ransomware into their environment. So we looked at that and we said, okay, there is this asset that we have, we have this threat, uh, we have this control, and you know, to try to mitigate those different uh, issues and try to look at you know, what was the items that it threatened and so forth. So uh, that exploit, um, uh, or that threat exploited this particular issue and then it affected this asset and then it had uh, an impact uh, and you had what mitigated it. So the idea, uh, or one of the original ideas, a concept for the game was, we were gonna have people do all of this, right? Go through a particular um, story and think about writing all this down and making this into a game. Well, it didn't sound very fun initially, so we decided to make it a little bit more random and add a little bit more uh, items to it such that uh, they could make it uh, more fun. And so when we started to do this and had this concept, and we we're gonna do it for RSA in 2022, uh, that was our, our kind of our idea, but we, print, we had like a, we had, um, we said, well, we'll just use an A-frame. We'll have them write up, and so for each dice roll, they'll have their system, they'll roll their dice, they'll fill out the cards. We found out that filling out those cards takes forever. One group did it, but they got zero dice rolls in because they spent all of their time 
designing their systems and creating, uh, creating cards and so forth. So I would say, although this idea works, you only really should use it if you got like a day of time. So huge lesson learned, cards can be hard and scorecards was a lot easier. In fact, um, in, the, in the actual document when it is released, and we, we do have a few pre-printed copies here, uh, we have a scorecard in the back. And we kind of try to think about the same kind of idea where you could just check it off and, and, and move forward with the card. So These are a great artifact. If you are doing, the, uh, d doing this at a corporate organization event, um, those fall out and then you can reuse them, right? You actually know where they fit within your development environment. You know where they fit within your enterprise environment. You understand that you don't have good auditing, or maybe your maybe your uh, uh, security operations center doesn't have a good incident response plan. You can uncover those through those artifacts. Right. Yeah. And, and the more time you have, the more effort you can spend with respect to that. So the one that we tried to focus on was kind of this whole incident response idea. Like you make up a system you roll the dice, and here's a much bigger version, so you kind of can see it there. Uh, if you roll 11, um, I still can't read it because my eyes are so bad, uh, but you roll 11, and then you have that threat, uh, and you basically go around and, and try to help facilitate the group talking about what, what the issues are. And if you're in the group and you don't know anything about it, you can learn from your other participants. It's one of the things we definitely found out as a lessons learned that Folks attending learn from other folks. They talk about some of the same things. They maybe chat a little bit before the, the session runs, and they'll talk about their own particular experience with those particular threats. And so our idea with rolling the dice is hopefully to get an even distribution across all of these uh, 11 items. Now, um, we did use number one uh, for the first time, uh, uh, for one in, sorry, one in 11, uh, and that's because people just mess up authenticating all the time, so uh, that one hit a couple times, uh, but then some folks would say, well, it was okay because one time uh, it didn't become an issue for us, but the next time it did, and then we had to go into the next level with that anticipation on what was it gonna cost in cleanup time that this particular item did affect us. Now, uh, this is the Pandemic 11. Uh, if there is a future 12, which I will probably poke on them to make it 12 or something nice, uh, nice and even, uh, then um, these will all change, you know, of course, in the future. The CSA does put this out every two years. Um, in fact, the very first version we did of it had the Egregious 11, uh, which was a former name for it. Sinister and so we had to go and update it for all of those and draw out a bunch of little icons and stuff like that. The first one was the Sinister Seven. There have been like six of them. Well, the first one we ran the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got you. Yeah, so we, inst we instituted the game with the Pandemic 11 and then right at CSA, uh, I'm sorry, right at RSA 2022, they released the Pandemic 11, then we had to go and re-update all the slides. So part of the durability is you'll end up updating it depending on what your system is. So say that you did this with, you know, like the CWE top 25, right? You're working with a bunch of developers and you say, here's the top 25 weaknesses in code and we're gonna look at our systems. We're gonna say, we're gonna learn about these weaknesses. We're gonna say, do we have, uh, you know, stuff in there to make sure that our code doesn't have these problems. You could take the same concept and apply it and adapt it any way that you would like. This way, nope, I can't seem to make it go forward. Oh, we're out of, okay, all right. Uh, another thing that we had uh, a little bit of difficulty with folks um, was gaming the system, right? Uh, we had to look at, and this is, you know, that capability or whatever we decide to name that, um, but the idea there is that you had um, a CISO and you know, a project manager, a consultant, a deputy CISO, a senior manager, there's one or two I think not particularly de depicted here. Well, we found that one group hired like 16 interns. And uh, that kind of 
game the system, right? And so we had to kind of set it up so, you know, they were only 50K, but if you added it up, they got a lot of, uh, they got a lot of work. And sometimes you do get a lot of work out of interns, right? So not that that's discounted, but we tried to make it a little bit more realistic, like that you'd have a guy in charge and so forth. And we added this capability um, uh, with respect to the program manager where the program manager had the ability to enhance the group's ability to do work. Basically that they were getting them organized and moving forward. Uh, these are some of the example of, uh, of the controls. And so one of the things that we tried to integrate to make it a little bit more readable for uh, doing this as a, a conference talk or a conference activity was uh, not to print out the entire cloud controls matrix. If anyone has seen the cloud controls matrix, it is a big, long Excel spreadsheet that no one's really going to have just printed out, right? So what we tried to do is uh, go to the uh, CIS uh, 18 critical security controls. We did kind of skip over the policy ones, and we kind of like said, okay, you might, some folks might want to add back in policy, stuff like that, but we looked specifically at technical controls. And so this one's business continuity uh, and resiliency, and so we kind of called it the resiliency product. So, uh, we came up with um, whether you know, software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, and so forth, given the ideas that if you have it in-house, it's a little bit easier for you to utilize, but it takes, takes a little bit more uh, work, where if someone is doing it for you, it takes less work, but it's not necessarily as effective. Um, now, uh, definitely as a huge lessons learned is to give example systems. Now, if you're doing this on your own system, and this has been done, folks have taken this in some of its pre-release set and said, hey, I've got a HR system. This is what our real system looks like. Draws it all out and then thinks about you know, these particular items. We actually did a payment system and an HR system. Uh, folks uh, still use their phone to take a photo of what that might look like. Um, so it's always nice to have like a printed copy of an example system or drawn out. We had easel boards so folks would ease and draw that out too. All right. Do you want to go over on the specific sure. examples? So as mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, one of the things that we did additionally find people complaining, like, well, why is SAS for this more effective than, than uh, a, a hybrid environment for that. And so again, we took some liberties as far as preventive, detective, corrective controls. One of those that, hey, it, it might be harder to find somebody that actually knows the PaaS environment within Azure, right? It's going to be easier to find somebody that can, uh, I, I, that, that somebody can identify and put out a firewall product that's on, on site. Right, so we took quite a few liberties. We grabbed uh, quite a bit of uh, blowback in the original version. We, we covered that in the uh, document as well. So in the decomposition, we got this far, right? And we ran it with uh, this level of decomposed system. Uh, we, we listed the top six uh, potential mitigations and what those would look like uh, within the environment. And you know, the idea being, look, Here's some examples. Here's what you might look at as far as the uh, uh, system goes. This also flopped. Yep, that's right. People are like, well, we don't have all of these. We can't take all of these. These aren't on the scorecard. Darn it. So then we put these together, right? And one of the comments was, Randall didn't want to put something out there that people were going to complain about even more. Well, why do I have Azure Active Directory in there? What does that look like? Yeah, right. AWS, is this come on? Is this really a lamp stack? You know, I, I mean, from that standpoint, again, there were complaints, and we're like, gosh darn it to heck. So, we got one further in, and actually showed where all of those. <laughs> Uh, where all of those controls would fit in. So you see uh, the AIS control, so you've got a SAST tool that's actually running through all of the code that people are developing. 
Um, you've got that identity and access management with Azure Active Directory versus AD on-prem, right? And so we, we set one of these up for AWS as a pure PaaS play. We put uh, the Azure Active Directory with some IaaS and some uh, uh, private, private cloud hybrid uh, organizational uh, elements such as the, uh, the seam or the uh, syslog at the bottom. And then those cost factors start coming into play, right? You see that, oh gosh, which one do I choose? And so, man, we, we, we really were learning the whole time. Here's the first of the mitigation tables. Let's try to get as many of these pieces put together in one slide as possible. And people forgot what the icons meant. Darn it. You know, you, you, you try to make it simple. And so we got a little bit further. Darn, what do the icons mean? Right? Uh, you, you see all of these X's on the screen. Those were hard to follow, right? We actually went through and, and within the top threats documents, the, uh, uh, the CCMs listed, well, that's not what we used for the first cut. We used the CIS, uh, 18 critical controls. Well, that didn't quite make it as holistic. One of the findings was, hey, you might benefit from having a complete soup to nuts implementation, right? CSA has the CCM, they've got the top threats, they've got the this, they've got the that. You can put all of those together and it just makes sense. Whereas if you're dealing with uh, NIST, you've got to get some OWASP in there. Maybe you've got some requirements that are derived from, uh, from your uh, overall control framework, et cetera. Oh, you were supposed to do that one. Yep, go for it. All right. Yeah, so uh, to make it even more easy, we gave them a printed example. Like, here's ones that we would choose. Uh, in our group that we had just a couple days ago, they said, well, we don't like those controls. We, we'll buy them all, right? And so they literally chose every possible control and to try to also to game the system, they chose the cheapest ones, which is, tends to be the SaaS ones, right? So they purchased every single possible SaaS solution. So in our case, the whole thing would be green. Uh, for, for the whole thing, but then they realized, and we kind of talked about this in, in the advanced section, that you do need a team to actually run the system. So I helped them determine, do they have the right team? Well, they only had like three or four people, but they had bought every possible control. It's kind of like walking out in the RSA show floor saying, I've got millions of dollars, come sell me something, and hundreds of people are gonna come and, you know, and pester you for the rest of your life. Well, they had their team, they were not ready to do that. So they had to cut some stuff back uh, when doing that. And, and then we eventually, we, and so in our, let me go back one, in the one that we have now, we, we use this as a, a blank slate right now. This is our current scorecard without the numbers populated here so that you could just write those in uh, for the folks. Um, one of the other game elements that uh, from a lessons learned standpoint, hit one back. Um, we put in place that you had to have a high enough work capability capacity to cover all of the uh, elements, all of the mitigations that you, you bought, right? So that it at least forced some sort of team to run the system versus just having all of the mitigations and no people uh, for, your, for your costs. All right, so just in, in conclusion, um, basically, uh, we do recommend uh, you know, adopting uh, a game like this. Uh, this will be able, you will be able to download it. We do have a couple printed copies here in the front. We don't have enough for everyone in the room. I think we have like maybe seven or eight-ish printed copies if you want a pre-release version of it. Of the documentation, uh, not the slideshow. Slideshow you can get on the website. Yeah, the slideshow are on the website and if you look on for a Tuesday lab, all of the labs is already on there. You could go and download that set too. Uh, but we have the printed document in the front. Uh, we had some extras. We gave it to everyone in that particular group there. On the high res that didn't take ink. Right. 
Well, whatever you do choose, and if you modify or, or say, we only want to deal with these certain set of, of threats, we do recommend an even number. Uh, we did you know, say that, okay, you could use a, a, a deck of cards or something like that. So if you remove out the king and the queen and treat the ace as a one, you basically have 11 if you take your four suits. So shuffle up the cards. You can do it that way if you don't want to have uh, you know, a 12-sided dice or something like that. So uh, definitely um, take a look at this. It's gonna be out very soon in a couple, well, at least says June, uh, it'll be out. Um, take it back to your organizations, think about your own systems, build one out, and then um, you know, get a, some group together, spend a couple hours. Um, it helps with the idea of threat modeling, right? You're definitely thinking about threats, how they affect your system, and try to find ways to mitigate all those risks in the end. And I think we're at questions with about three or four minutes left, I think. One last comment. Please run through it ahead of time. Yeah. Because you're going to find some things, again, Maybe similar to- Maybe two or three times in our case, yeah. but yeah. The, the, the uh, gaming the system aspects, those do come out. The $5 million budget, you torched it, or you got $2 million afterwards, mm -hmm. it doesn't make it interesting. Yes, sir. Yeah. Might sound like a silly question, but when you were putting this together, how much, how many people around the table were were really gamers? I mean, gamers, gamers that play board games and role playing games and those kind of things. Um, couple, couple, and they all took our dice. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we had like a couple tables that still had twelve sided dice when we were done. Uh, but no, actually, they were, we we had a couple tables that were D and D players and all sorts of stuff, or Magic the Gathering, or one of one of the other ones. Yeah, we, it, it it surprisingly happened. Yeah, quite a few times. Because I I have friends that do board gaming edition. That's what publishing. That's what they do. And a lot of the common issues you're seeing is going through playtesting of all their games and all the things that are written too small. People don't remember icons and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So. If you have board gaming friends and you're trying to do this, invite them over, even, then, even if they don't know anything about cybersecurity, because board gaming is a lot of what you're seeing is really a lot of common issues there. Yep. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, thanks. Cool, yeah, uh, thank cool you. presentation. All right, anyone else? The Pandemic 11 includes insider risks as well. Nice. Yes, so there are identity and access management issues. Um, Over-provisioning, for instance. Um, within the deep dives, uh, within those two-page overviews of individual breaches, et cetera, those elements are covered. And where the threat actor came from, uh, what was actually the vulnerability that they exploited, et cetera. So we try to include with those deep dives, we try to include all of those aspects that were on the threat cards that we mentioned a little earlier. I think Sorry, we have... did I repeat the question? I forgot. Um, it was, where, where do all the uh, threat actors come from? Anyone else? No, yes, maybe. All right, well, definitely, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for tolerating us at 8.30 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and Thank you for being awake. Yeah. <laughs>